Hello and welcome to my video tutorial series RPG in a Box. I am Carsten and in this episode we are going to create the interior of our house and improving the visual details a lot. In the last episodes we built that wonderful house with several floors, stairs, auto hiding configuration and also beautiful windows and doors. But currently we have a lack of building interior, so our outer wall design of stone is also the inner side of our house and that is not very nice. So in the meantime, I improved my design concept, how we can build a house with individual rooms, real individual rooms. So uh, the desired solution is to build a house with a first floor out of stone at the outside and a plaster inner side, and a second floor with a half timber design like in old German and English towns. And we will go on with the new concept now. So we have a basic structure of our house and while thinking about how to build individual rooms and separate them, I came every time to the same point. That would also be bricks in the, in the middle of the house. I cannot separate the walls from the outer side. And that brings me to the idea why not building shelves? So we can separate the inner wall from the outer wall and we can have a stone outer side, outside and a plaster inside. So I think this is a really great thing and I played very much around with this to don't go in the, in the wrong direction. And we should start by splitting our models apart. So we are going to split our first model in pieces. So otherwise we will get a very thick wall, which isn't beautiful at all. So we reduce the wall thickness to also get a four voxel width of the house walls and we have to invert the sides so the new uh, the old outside will be the new inside we can do it really easy by getting the color and just fill it with voxels so the new color is just in the gaps you see and then we have to cut out our joints again at the other side. So in the meantime I also found a solution by deselect of deselecting individual voxels. So we can now select multiple voxels and by pressing shift and alt key we can deselect single voxels. That's really really helpful while modeling. And also I recognized that I missed, um, I every time say you can use undo by pressing alt and set, and it really um, controls it. I every time did the right, but I set the wrong. So sorry about that. So that's the new model and we can save it. And we do this with every single model. So I made it in the meantime. That's the new corner at the inside, of the inner side. That's the new outer corner. That is the new lintel, the uh, ledge, and the straight wall. So we can go on with this. If we look at the map editor, we see it's really, really weird. So we have to build a new house at all. It's much faster than fixing this. So, but first we want to build a first interior wall. So let's copy this and call it a wall, wall, wall of plaster corner inner. And now we simply have to fill the gaps with the attach voxel tool and then we can repaint all voxels in a plain white so that's the first white plaster okay so and now we do this with all other tiles too so now like the stone walls we have plaster parts in every design so we can use this for the interior and maybe 
we are not satisfied by having a white plastered or a plastered or so maybe you won't have a green one and a pink one and a brown one and you want to spread millions of um, different tiles in your tile folder so we can use a concept called textures so let's go on with the textures now so the concept of textures and the difference between animations is the following. You can avoid building thousands of tiles just because you want to recolor specific parts of the model. So with textures, you can recolor voxels, but you cannot reposition or replace or delete voxels at all. So you can build uh, several color set settings for each animation as well. And to use this, we have to add a new texture first. So press the Add Texture button and call it Light Gray, because that should be the color we want to use. And it's D3, D3, D3. And now we repaint or recolor the complete model. And we can save. So if you add a new texture, you simply made a copy, like with animations, and then you can just recolor the the, the details so you can use also your defined textures as presets so let's go on with the next and that should be mint green if you worry about the colors you can use every color you like um, you have to use you have to use the same colors than me and as I said in previous episodes, I have a problem uh, to differentiate between red and green. I have a color distortion, I think it's in English. So I use uh, color catalogs and uh, normally I stick to the, to the hex codes. Okay, and the next color is uh, Negroni. I like these names. So, and Negroni is... Um, F F F F um, E six B F F F E six B F. So that's Negroni. And the last one we use to build individual design is uh, Periwinkle. Periwinkle. So and that's um, B F. C F F F. So well, that's periwinkle. So and now we have a set of colors for using textures. So now I did the same with every single model. So we have a drop down menu at every single model to choose the colors from. And uh, we also can do this in the map editor. So we now want to switch to the map editor and play with the interior design. But first, let's have a short break. In the last episode, we talked about a navigation bug and it's, it isn't fixed at all. I thought it is fixed, but it isn't. I had a long discussion about the Christ uh, over the Christmas time and the Discord forum and I fixed it to 90%, but not completely. So I can make, I, I did a scenario to show you an, an detailed example because it's really abstract to tell, tell you about a problem which you cannot see. So if I want to interact with this window, and let me show you, there is a navigation line like you expected. So everything looks pretty well. There's a navigation line over the wall, so attached to the window, and we can interact with the window. So our character should be go straight to the window and open it. But it isn't the truth. So I show you, if I press to the window, the character makes it big round around the house to uh, to come to the window and open the window. And even if I reach the window, I stuck at this position. So now I cannot leave this field just by going the whole trip back. So and why is this? This is because we have stacked animation lines uh, and navigation nodes as well. So if we check it, we can see we have a navigation node, look at this, at 0, 0 and also to 1, 0. See, here we can see at 0, 0 isn't a navigation line, but at 1, 0. We see it at a white square and the gray square 
face, there isn't a navigation line. And we can simply check it pretty easy by removing the ground floor. And then we see where the navigation occurs. This is the route our character moves to reach the window. So, and it's pretty easy to solve this problem. I played a little bit around, nay, I played a lot around with this, and it's occurred never since the new models and the pre uh, preparing of the new episodes. So let's have this in mind while building the new area. So now we create a new map. I call mine Sanchi's house. And now the important things. While building the new area, we start with the floor of the house and make sure that you use the auto connection. And we use this every time on the ground floor where the character should move. So let's make it um, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 width and 6 height. And then two more and also four. And the same again. So this should be our ground level. And now we can add the grass as well to build a little backyard. And then we have to build our river. And we change the direction. So I think it would be very great to build a, a waterfall in the, in the back position, but not in this episode, in the future. So like this, I guess. So we can simply copy it up. There is a incorrect navigation line I see. We can walk through the water. So let's do it like this and then we remove the misplaced navigation lines and we also should add our bridge. So simply that's it. And now let's uh, change our startup script to use this map. And we should start here at 5.6560 with a direction north. So first saved, 560. So new area, starting position is 5.6.0 and position is north. And we should check that everything works pretty well. And okay, we did it. So first, let's check the passability of our fields. That's the core, that the reason for the misaligned navigation paths, or not mis misaligned, the auto connection over the river, which isn't right. So, and then we go to the map editor and we begin to build our, our external wall shell. So first we move every navigation line, which is connected between the exterior and the interior side of our house like this, and we draw them new. So, and every single navigation line and interaction line will be on the ground floor in, in the future. So just at layer zero, no more walls, no more ledges. And if you use a second layer under your grass, you have to be sure not to draw at this. So every time, top walking layer, like this. Okay, and now we can set the external shell. So if you see our modeling matches perfect with the gap between our uh, next to our river. So we raise the set layer by one and now be sure to disable the auto connection. Otherwise, we get navigation lines at our walls again. So we have navigation lines attached on top of other navigation lines, which are, in, which are invisible. And that's the main reason for the bug. 
So in the future, we also don't use navigation lines over the ledge as well. So, and save. So, and now we tear down the wall parts to prepare our windows. We can use the box mode. And then we build a window here and here. And also this position and this position and this. And then two from the right and two from the left. And also at this side of the wall, like this. So, and now, the next thing is to draw the interaction lines, and we draw it at the ground floor. So, the last time we wouldn't be able to interact with the windows, because our windows are attached to the ledge, and the ledge is at the, at the, second, at the second layer. So now we are on the ground layer, and then we put the ledge of the window to layer one. Be sure to disable the auto connection. So it looks really strange because we are used to see navigation lines over the ledge. Also in every tutorial of RPG in the box default, I guess. So, so simply that's it. No, it's not. We have also to build the the lintel. I'm not sure if it's the right English word for it. So if you have better wording, um, write it down to the commands. So now we are finished. And now we can build the interior. So we go back to layer one. And now we separate our rooms by beginning with the edges. So this should be a room and also that's well, pretty good. So let's make four times four like this. And then we place it here and there and there too. So and then we have to fix the navigation lines to avoid being able to walk under the walls. So now be sure to don't have a wall tile before drawing your interaction line. So you remove this and this. So there isn't a second layer on set one. So we can not trigger misaligned navigation lines at all because there simply is no other layer. Pretty easy. So, okay, like this. So, and now we can build. No, no, not like this. Like this. Okay. That should be our navigation lines. And now we continue with placing the corners like this. And then the walls and I overdraw the windows and I will correct it later. So let's go to the fast forward mode. So that's it. So I think it's really impressive for now. So we can have a an, an separate interior now. And now we will come to the textures again. So you have to use the select tool 
at each individual wall tile. So you cannot choose a group and then recolor everything. So you have to set the textures step by step. So we will color this in mint green. And if you see, you doesn't see any changes. That's a bug and it's also communicated to the developer of RPG in the box. So hopefully there will be a fix soon. We see it after saving the map and reopening it, or closing the map and then reopen it. But not after interacting with a tile. And also if you select a tile later, you will lose the information about the color, the visual information. It's also saved in the map and in the game, but you cannot see it in the editor. So, and now let's come to this room and we paint it with Negroni. So that's it. Then we have to save. We close the map and open it again. And now we see our changes. So that's pretty awesome. Don't stuck to the colors. Yeah? You can use uh, wooden panels in millions of ways as you like. Uh, I just want to show you the design concept to separate it and build individual shells for each room. So each room gets a thing, uh, it's, its unique flair. And I think that's a pretty awesome design. So what do you think about it? Um, let me know in the comments. And now we go on with the special part. In the meantime, I did a little bit modeling stuff and prepared some objects, so like this bed, and I used marching cubes, so we can see it in the preview. It's a marching cube object completely, and I separated, sorry, I separated just uh, one group so that there is a gap, and it will be marching cubes again, but uh, individually, designed uh, we have stairs uh, we have a chair and i also improved the the wooden door panel to use marching cubes and because that look that doesn't look pretty well i scaled it a little bit down so we can see it here it's reduced to a to a thickness of uh, Two po uh, 0 0.33, so we use a third of the thickness and it looks more than uh, wooden locks. And it's pretty nice, I think. And I also created a table with marching cubes and a trap door as well, which is also scaled down. And for the new models, like the trap door and the window, I uh, increased the grid for every single um, model for the panels. So you see it's a six width grid and 24 height and then while attaching I reduced it uh, to 50% at the width and the high and the thickness to 25% so I have to scale up the angle uh, the hinges as well and it's also marching cubes so that the, the glass panel looks like this and the protection sun protection panel I think uh, looks like this and the the finished window looks like this and this. And now we want to place them. But before, I also um, did my life easier by attaching the attach points in a straight line at the center of the angles and at the absolutely bottom of the model. So I can uh, position it pretty easy because now all attach points are in the rotation sources or the rotation routes. So that's pretty well. And now we want to place it in the map. So we have to be familiar with the new design. So our lines are under the wall and connected to a C, uh, a set index zero. So previously we built all windows at top of the wall. 
but we haven't to do this. So let's start with the inner frames, which are the glass panels. And now if we look closely to the coordinates, we see that we can place it on top of the wall, but also we can place it on top of the ground floor. If we go a little bit lower with the mouse and that is the solution which is pretty easy and a mess much uh, lesser error thrown so i didn't get any problems since this solution so but you have to look very precise where your windows are attached so zero Zero. With doors, this is no problem because under the door isn't a, a second layer. So we are directly on the ground floor. And now we get a little problem. So our object is aligned a little bit deeper because gap, but that's no problem at all. Um, Justin announced that the next version of RPG in a box, which should be released in a few days, uh, has an object offset so we can fix the door position and doesn't have to matter it in the, in the model design. So and now we attach the door and we additional have an, an oh let's first correct the navigation line. So we use the the frame with the door. At the outside so our door opens to the outside and at the inner side we use a, a frame facade so it looks like a single door but it's a combined from multiple shells so and also at this position so this should open to the outside and this should open to the inside and previously we wasn't able to do it e so easy so now we can change the opening direction of the door pretty easy and uh, even with the windows we we doesn't blow our mind how to differentiate uh, between opening the sun protection and the glass panel and we have a mess of states and so it's pretty easy every single window uh, is split in two pieces and has an open and close animation and that's it so now it's time to check this out in the game. Let's save. So look at this wonderful house. We can interact with the doors as usually. We can open the windows by pressing spacebar and we also can interact with the outer side, pressing at the frame. And we can walk through the door. So that should be an incorrect navigation line, I, I guess. So that's not a problem. And let's try this window as well. Their navigation line is connected to the, to the river and it works pretty nice. So we can start to build the next floor, but previously I want to show you a change in the scripting. So I changed the open window script from the last episode. So I added a default case. So if no state is set, then the state of the door is set to is opened and that's now a boolean expression so it can be true or false and if nothing is set it's automatically false so we just have to set it uh, if the window is uh, opened by default then we handle the state is opened then uh, if if not open so if open is false then play the open animation and set it to open is, is opened to true and otherwise if it's opened true then play the close any close animation and set is open to false um, a benefit is if you write your script self and you have a typo in your code you get an error message and cannot compile this at all so it's easier to maintain and previously we had a string expression with a small powerful, so we have more variations, but we don't need this anymore because we have just the panel and or or the glass and not the panel and the glass. So we don't use states like uh, panel opened and glass opened and locked and uh, unlocked and such things. So 
Okay, that's it. I changed this script at all windows, and now we can build the second floor. So back in the map editor, we can put a new floor on top of our walls, but we will come to the same problem. We have wood at the ceiling and at the roof too, at the, at the floor too, and to avoid this, we simply add a new model called a ceiling. And otherwise, then the the floor, the ceiling, uh, is at the uppermost voxel, so we have a lot of space to building a uh, design like um, um, supporting bars or something else, uh, wood blocks, um, decorative stuff. So we have to be sure to set the surface level to the maximum. So this is the level uh, on top of the ceiling so that it matches perfectly on top of the wall. So let's bring this to the map. We use the ceiling and we copy the position and go one block higher and then be sure to disable the auto connection mode. Otherwise we would get navigation lines on top of this and also on the new ground floor for the second uh, on the new ground for the second floor. So like this. And now we use the parquet, raise it by one level and enable the auto connection mode. So that's it. So again we have only navigation lines at the walking ground floor. So let's check the highs. I won't prevent to have a new misaligned that level and to do all this again. So to go on, go on with the second floor, I pre-made some new parts. So I used the wooden block and cut the half timbered um, modules as well by cutting them out. And then I simply can refill the gaps with the attach voxel tool and the color. So I showed you already, I guess I can just Add it to the gaps. So, and I build it with diagonal lo locks for supporting and a uh, more thicker support beam in the corner. An additional and tile on top where the diagonal is continued, and an outer corner with decorative stuff, and also uh, a lintel, a ledge, a ledge with diagonal locks, and a lintel, and a normal straight wall and a straight wall with uh, the diagonal at the upper side, uh, the lower side and the upper side. And now we can to build our second floor from the half timber parts. So now we use a different level because we have two ground floors, the ceiling, as a, uh, we have the ceiling and the new ground floor as well. And we will start with placing the edges. So we copy the high and raise it by a complete block and two more. So we are now at the ground level 35. So let's check it. That looks pretty good. So now we begin to add the lower line. Oh, and we have to disable the auto connection. That's the most important thing. So let's go to the fast forward mode again.
So, and simply that's it. Now we will add the inner side as the plaster ball. So, can we separate our rooms first? Then we fix the navigation lines as well. And then we continue with building the interior shell. So we have to cut uh, this, I guess. This, oh, let's cut this too. And this as well. So again, we have no walls at this height, so we cannot cross misaligned navigation lines at all. Otherwise, we have to watch precisely to the coordinates that we are attached at layer 34. Let's come to the windows. We use the select mode or select box mode and we cut out the window parts. So, and to get interactable windows, we need a little hack. So we want to draw a navigation line here as well, but we haven't um, a good way to do this, so we can use a hack. Maybe this works as well, but I played a little with, uh, with this one, which is an invisible tile, as you see, and we can put it at the outer side of our house to add the navigation lines on top. So we simply copy the height and put this on front of each window. And then we draw our interaction lines to this field. Oh, I've, I have forgotten one more thing. So like this. Now we draw the interaction lines precisely from 34. If you start at 34, it's no problem at all. And normally it uses the topmost position. So the risk to get a position of 33, which is the ceiling, is uh, really low. low. So like this. Okay, and now we can build our ledges. Like this. So we should check the windows first. So to be sure, to avoid misaligned navigation paths, we can erase or delete these tiles. And if there is a remaining yellow navigation line, then we have it attached it to the ceiling floor. But there is no such thing. So let's undo this. And then I want to add more details to my half timbered design.
so like this and then we can also do a uh, interior of the half timber design as well So that's it. And now we come to the windows again. So again, we have to look precisely at the positioning. We have to be more careful. So let's check it out. We have the helper tile at the position 34. So we have to attach the tile, uh, the, the window as well at position 34. So we have to look precisely at the positioning. 34, 34. In my Christmas vacation, I made a trip with my family to Bad Kissing. And I made a few studies of architecture for old houses, half timbered and bricks, brick, brick houses. And it was very interesting about designing stuff, so how to build decor levels as well. This is also a really um, modular design, mostly with the same elements repeating again and again and again, like a grid. So, simply that's it. Okay. So to reach the floor, we need stairs as well. So let's move on with the stairs. First, we remove these four tiles and bath levels. So we can place our stairs and we erase the uh, navigation lines as well. So and now if we put the stairs, where are my stairs? If we put the stairs to the ground floor, I have to be more precise. If we put the stairs here, we we losing the the wooden field and at layers one we lose the walls so we can do this but then we have to close the gaps so we can make another animation not just with railings so with um, the plaster as well but it's horrible complicated so we use another thing we just adjust the surface level not like previously to layer one, instead to layer zero as two, layer two, and we save it. And then we can place by default every single stairs tile two levels above the ground. So at layer zero is the ground floor, at layer one, one on top is the wall, and one more is the stairs. So that's no problem at all. And we have also a modular design, which is repeatable in nearly every single scenario. So we can put them like this, and then we attach our, uh, we, we apply our animation to remove the railings. So now you see it's not that complicated, and the side of the stair is. Uh, in the wall, but we don't see the set fighting, which occurs because we don't see the other side of the wall. The only thing where we see it is here, and we will fix this soon as well. So let's draw the navigation lines first. And I see I have the wrong animation. So like this. Okay, that's pretty nice. So let's draw the navigation lines. And now we can 
check it out. So, no, um, I need a little bit aura in my mind. Um, I forgot to do the uh, hiding stuff, so I will do it in a fast forward. So, while editing the the levels, not the not the hiding groups, just the walking level, I came to the point to include the first wall floor as well. So, if you ever have a misaligned navigation path, you avoid flickering because you're already at the same level and not at a ungrouped field. So I add this to level one. So, and now we can try if we are able to interact with every single tile. So, hiding works mostly well, so I missed this single field, and here we have a, a railing as well. But we can interact with the window. That's pretty nice. So and we have a simple modular design, and that's the point where modular design is a real fun. Oh, a, a misalign, uh, the wrong navigation line as well. Currently, we have this gap in our auto wall, and that's not very beautiful. So we have to close this. And at my architecture studies, I saw this many houses from about 19 to, till 1910 has decorative um, designs. And we will use such one to hide this little gap. So I built a ornament row so this is for the outer side and the surface level is exactly in the middle. So we can put them on top of the upper wall and it closes the gap exactly at this four voxels. And this is the decorative stuff, which is at the outer side of the wall. So we can um, build a lot of decorative stuff for our house. And for the inside of our house, I simply made it with the plaster as well and also the texture so we can color it. And it's just closing the gap. So now we can attach this on top of the wall. So I get the height, the right position like this. And one level higher and we can close this gap. And if we look close, it matches perfectly to the gap. So we can design special, the special um, ornament rows for each individual building part. So the basic design now is we have a ground and we can attach multiple lines of walls. So by default, there are two. Then we attach a ceiling on top and also a new ground floor. And we close the two layers of the ceiling and the ground floor with an ornament row. So I think it's pretty easy and simple, but maybe too complicated. So I'm very interesting about your tabs. Uh, that's it. No, we have to close this gap as well. And then we should not forget to adjust the hiding. So that is misaligned. Yeah. 
that's it. Pretty awesome. And let's. I I will fix the navigation in the quick break. So while talking about modular design, we can split our river as well. So we can cut the bridge from the tile and put it in its own tile. So we can combine this bridge to several several um, rivers as well. So I pre-made it and we just have to adjust the surface level one set level higher so we can it attach on top but and it sinks in the ground so we can now remove our bridge as well and can use as, it as a modular design as well where we can attach our bridge at every possible position like this that's wrong so i have to watch out to be at set level one, and that's the right one. Okay. And also I want a bridge well, here, I guess. I will share every single resource and a complete map in my Dropbox as well. So that's it. So now we have to build the last floor. I will do it in a fast forward mode again, and then I can put the roof on top. So let's go on with this. So now we have to put another ceiling as well, and we can use a little hack. So we place it at the same level, so it matches perfectly at the topmost voxel. We also can do a, a decorative bar, so an ornament layer as well. But it's not, uh, we, we don't need it at this position. So we should build our stairs now. I think at this position, maybe exactly right. Okay. So that is the ground floor and remember two layers higher than this. Like this, and now we can place the railings as well. So, we can do this by using an object instead of. Oh no, we for I've forgotten to place the ornament layer as well. So now we can fix the remaining problems by adding the, <clears throat> the level one height should include level two height and level three height as well. So we can select them, select all voxels uh, or tiles and add it to the group two. Level one height, 
same thing with level 3 height, which also should be in level 2 height. And that should the trick. So to get sure we don't miss anything, we in we visualize every single layer, and now we check. So level three height is this, which is pretty good. Level two height is this, which is also pretty good. Level one height is oh no, level one height is this. So we miss the stairs. Oh, that's not complicated. So at least we have to check the, the levels. So level one should be this, the, the first floor. Pretty good. Level two should be the second floor which is also pretty good. And level three should be the upper floor, uppermost floor, which is also pretty good. And now we have, no, yeah, it's wrong. It's the wrong level. Deselect level three, I said. That's pretty good. So level three, level three, are per perfect. Level, this should also be level two. And level one, yeah, level two, it's pretty good. So let's go to the game. Changed my mind. Before we start to try it out in the game, we add a few furniture as a simple example. So we have this bed and as you see, I have a gap of two voxels, so it's is very precisely attached to the wall, so I can place it in the corners. Uh, same with the table, and we can put this to our map. So simply height level one. And the bed should be straight in the corner. And I want also have a table as well, and also two chairs. And with the chairs, we can do a pretty awesome thing. So we can select the chairs. And one thing is we can scale it up and down. So we can make big chairs or small chairs, but that's not the point. Um, the interesting thing is we can change the rotation. So we have a more chaotic look and feel, and it's not everything aligned to the to the axis. So it's look more natural. And we don't have to model this at all. And in the next update, I guess um, Justin announced that we get um, an offset for objects so we can have more um, space for creativity by aligning the objects or uh, repositioning the off uh, objects with offsets. So I think that is a pretty great thing. So, and if we are on it, we can also improve the yard. So we can build a, I don't know the English word. Something like a hill. <laughs> okay, so, and that should be the last modeling episode. So we did a lot modeling in the last times. So I want to hang up with this. I, I don't want to stuck on this. So the next episode will be about the full lighting. And then we will come to inventory and items and quests, I guess. But um, hmm, be warned, I'm very spontaneous. So <laughs> maybe I change my mind in the meantime, but uh, that's the current plan. So now we have to fix the navigation lines as well. 
Let's do it in a quick step. I will fix this in deep and uh, download the lessons. So, and now we will do a final trip in our house. Don't forget to to re-enable the level one height. So if you forget this, you won't see it in the game. Oh, and we have missed something more. We missed the the canopy. I found this word. The distance where the where the roof goes over the wall. So that the wall is protected. From the rain. I hope it's the right word for it. Can canopy. And we can also add one on the edges. And we see a little bit set fighting, but I think no user won't recognize this because no one looks from this up. Uh, this high position of the house uh, to the house so that's it so i will fix the hiding as well so let's have a last look into the house we change the camera settings to first person i think that's the most impressive and we start the game so we can walk in the hills and look at this beautiful house. So opening the doors looks works pretty well. We have our interior. Also we have um, ne Negroni seatings as well. And we can build each single part by our wishes. We can change the walls, the ceilings, the roofs, everything. So I think that's pretty cool design and a pretty cool concept to build the interior of a house. But maybe you know a better solution. Oh, this is misplaced, but no problem at all. So this is the hack with the interactable doors. So we see a little shining, a little shadow. Maybe I have to adjust the colors or prevent the first person mode. Or maybe using another kind of script. I will think about it. So that's it for now. As usual, if you like this so far, give me thumbs up. I would be very excited about your subscription and I hope we see us in the next episode. Bye!